proximal femoral fractures. This patient has got a fracture of the neck of femur on the left. It's quite subtle. You've got increased density here and this is because the fracture is impacted. Also, you've got loss of Shenton's line, which is interrupted by the femoral epiphysis falling into the line, which is shown here. And this is an impacted fracture of the neck of femur. This is the same patient having a CT scan. Here is the impaction. The trabeculae overlap as the weight of the patient forces the femoral head into the femoral neck. And you get this uh, sclerotic line and loss of Shenton's line. There is uh, important vascular anatomy to be considered. The artery of the ligamentum teres, the blood flows in this direction, and it supplies the capsule of the joint. The blood supply to the femoral head actually comes from the deep femoral artery, which gives rise to the medial and lateral circumflex arteries. The medial circumflex artery then gives rise to arteries that supply the neck and the femoral head, and also the retinacular arteries. The lateral circumflex artery produces an ascending, a transverse, and a descending branch, which supply the area at the intertrochanteric line and below. So if you get a fracture of the neck of the femur, or in the subcapital region, you interrupt the blood supply that supplies the femoral head, and the patient will ultimately get avascular necrosis of the femoral head. If, on the other hand, you have a fracture through the intertrochanteric region, you still have a blood supply to the femoral neck and the femoral head because this has not actually interrupted the medial circumflex femoral artery. So this is an impacted fracture of the subcapital region. Here is another example where you've got an impacted fracture. Shenton's line is not necessarily disrupted in this position, but the sclerotic line implies that you've got trabeculae which are overlapping because of the impaction. Here is a displaced subcapital fracture of the proximal femur with disruption of Shenton's line and angulation. Here is a non-displaced intertrochanteric fracture. This will not give rise to avascular necrosis because the medial circumflex artery is intact and gives rise to the blood vessels that supply the femoral head. Here is a subtrochanteric fracture which does not disrupt the blood supply and will not lead to avascular necrosis. So the important thing to remember when looking at femoral fractures is to remember that the blood supply of the femoral head comes distally to proximally. And so if you have a fracture at this level, you're going to interrupt the blood supply. Any fracture at or below the intertrochanteric line does not lead to avascular necrosis.